It's now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Today is Wednesday, December the 9th. I'm Donna Will, Professional Development Coordinator for the Developmental Disabilities Administration. We welcome you to the Maryland Community of Practice for Supporting Families webinar series. This is webinar number 14. Charting the life course, the integrated star. This session is being facilitated by Marianne King Breshi, Director of Family Supports for DDA. And uh, her guests today are Babette Smith, a parent, and daughter, Mel Smith. Before we begin, I'd like to go over a few things about the webinar. All participants are in listen-only mode. There are two options for listening to the webinar, by computer and by phone. And there are three handouts in, that you can find in the handout section to the panel on your right. Um, and there's three of those. And they can also be emailed if you're listening by phone. We are recording the webinar and that will be available on the DBA website. And if we have time at the end, we'll take questions directly related to the webinar. If you have a question regarding services and supports, please contact your local regional office. <clears throat> if you have questions related to Appendix K, please submit them to dda.toolkitinfo at maryland.gov. In addition, we're interested in highlighting how people with disabilities and their families are supporting and caring for one another during this pandemic throughout the webinar series. If you're interested in sharing your story, please contact Mary Ann Kane Breshi directly at mary.kane-breshi at maryland.gov or me, Donna Will, Donna.will at maryland.gov. So now I'd like to introduce Mary Ann Kane Breshi. Hi. Thank you, Donna. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome on behalf of the Maryland Community Practice. Welcome to our webinar. Um, as, as many of you already know, the purpose of this series is to, to bring people, to bring people with disabilities, family members, and others together. Um, our goal is to, to learn from one another, share information and ideas, all in an effort to build knowledge and skill and, and hopefully resiliency within ourselves and, and within the community particularly as we move through COVID-19 and, um, and beyond. Throughout this series, we've talked about, we've addressed all different, different topics that, uh, of concern that have impacted people and families um, related to, to COVID during this time. And we've, we've wanted to share information about that. We brought, we normally bring people in. Um, we have our subject matter experts and special guests. And we do that, we discuss these things with them, with their help, and we also do this through the lens of charting the life course framework. Today, I'm really excited because we're gonna talk about the integrated star. We're actually talking about charting the life course and, and this pr the principle of the integrated star. And, and we're doing this in an effort to give you an understanding of it as a principle, its purpose, and how it can be used. But before we do that, we're gonna just talk briefly about charting the life course. Um, it is, so what is charting the life course? It is a set of universal principles and tools. Its fundamental principle states that all people have the right to live, love, work, play, learn, and pursue their aspirations in the community. It was developed out of the University of Missouri, Kansas City Institute for Human Development Family to Family Program. And it was developed to help people with developmental disabilities and their families create a vision for their good life. Think about what they need to know and do, navigate and or to develop supports and services. And finally, you know, really discover what it's gonna take to, to live these lives, their lives of their choosing and, and do it. Um, I'm so excited that we're gonna, we're gonna dig deeper into the integrated star. Um, and um, so let's get to it. So the integrated star, what is the integrated star? As a principle, the integrated star recognizes that all people need supports and resources to live and lead a good life. People with intellectual developmental disabilities and their families are no different. Often these supports um, and resources center around the person's strengths and assets, relationships, technology, community resources, and finally, eligibility-specific supports. Historically, though, the, the difference for um, people with DD is that um, when working with folks and planning their lives, helping them to do that, we, we focus solely on 
eligibility specific supports, forgetting the others, forgetting that they have strengths and assets and they have relationships with social capital and, uh, and, um, and technology is available to them as well as other community resources. And so now going forward, as we plan, we want to look beyond eligibility specific. We want to look beyond health and safety, although critical, um, but we really want to take into account the person's strengths and assets and the relationships, technology there, so forth and so on. So as a tool, you know, when you when you when you're sitting down and you're working with someone, you you the the what I love about the integrated tool, integrated star is that it can really help to organize and generate ideas about the resources the person and his or her team may have or don't have, as well as begin to brainstorm as to how you might work in partnership to achieve the particular vision or the goal that the person has for themselves. This can be done using the actual tool, the star, or you can just, as you're sitting, as you're sitting and you're discussing and meeting, you can remember just the, the if you can remember the five points of the star during that planning and problem solving, just to again remind yourself to think about these different resources that might be available to folks. Um, you can use the star um, for making day-to-day -day decisions or use it for planning for the future. It can also you can also help you with um, conversations with other team members about new ideas or hard or hard topics to talk about. There is what we want you to know is this: that there is no wrong way to get started or um, to place or to put your ideas. It's it is the star is designed to assist you in expanding your ideas and helping you to see how to leverage and connect the different types of support and build capacity within your life and the, or the life of, of your family member to achieve their good life. So that said, I, I guess I'm just for a moment here to talk about my own experience with the STAR. What I love about the integrated STAR is this, is that it, the magic of the STAR is that I or we um, always find that when we sit and we discuss, we're, we're having a discussion about whatever it might be that perhaps Maggie wants in her life or, or what we might even want in our life. When you sit down and, and you apply the star to it, you begin with these different um, categories. What I end up finding, what we ultimately invariably find is that we have more resources and supports available to us than we originally thought. Now, I don't mean to sound um, Pollyannish about this because there are times when there are things that Maggie might need that that we just don't have right now, or you know, access to a particular opportunity or or what have you. It may not be there, but <clears throat> through the discussion and as we map these things out and look at you know who who does she have in her life, um, who might be able to assist with something or not. What are her strengths that she brings to? The equation around whatever it is that we're we're moving towards. What role does technology? Technology plays plays a huge life in our in Maggie's life and in ours. In the end, what I find is that um, we really do have more available to us. It may take time to get towards our goal, but nonetheless, we always end up feeling more hopeful and um, and are really looking forward and more committed and feeling more confident in our ability to bring about what it is that um, my daughter is in need of um, or what we are in need of in order to support her. And then the, and the very reality is this, sometimes there are some things that aren't gonna work out and that's that's also part of life. But that said, um, today I we want to give you an opportunity to, to get a feel for the star and to do that, we thought it would be a lot of fun to um, consider the challenge of a happy ha having a happy, healthy holiday. And to help us to do this, Babette Smith and her daughter, Mel, are joining us. And they are going to walk us through their star as they begin to, as they use the integrated star um, and apply it to their challenge around how to have a happy, healthy holiday this year, one that looks very different than last year due to COVID-19, where we all find ourselves. So with that, I want to thank both Babette, and if you put a wave of your hand, and Mel 
for your time, expertise, and creativity. And I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you, Marianne. Um, I'm Babette, as she said, and this is my daughter. Can you tell him your name? Melanie. Melanie, thank you. <laughs> Melanie Smith, that's right. And uh, we're going to walk you through how we personally use the trajectory and the integrated star to address a very real problem that many people other than us are facing right now, how to have a happy, healthy holiday season. Um, the first thing we're going to look at is the trajectory, and Marianne mentioned it briefly, but the trajectory is used as a tool from Charting the Life Courses that looks at a vision or a goal and helps determine what you need to happen to take you to that goal and what you don't want to happen that might take you away from your goal. So in our picture here, we have, this is an older picture, but this is Melanie and her nephew Briar. And it's one of my favorite pictures because it just shows what we all want in our holiday. We, we want the closeness of family. Um, so we chose that picture just so we could share that. So, so far our vision of ha to have a happy, healthy holiday, um, you'll see that listed at the top. And what does that look like? Well, what do we want? We wanna have fun memories. We wanna have time with our family. We wanna keep building on our traditions, such as wearing crazy outfits during the holidays. We wanna have good food. We wanna decorate trees, make cookies. And most of all, we want everyone to stay healthy. Um, those things head us towards the goal of having a happy, healthy holiday season. What don't we want? So, we don't want anyone to get sick. Uh, during this time, we're doing everything we can. We're following the guidelines. We're staying socially distanced. We're wearing masks. Uh, Melanie and I do live together, so we don't have masks on at the moment. Um, but we haven't been able to see our families that don't live in the household. Um, and, and we don't want that. We don't want the time without families. We don't want to not have activities to do. We don't want to be bored and isolated um, when you're when you really can't go to many places because you are fearful of health complications due to COVID-19 when you already have health issues. Um, you don't wanna feel isolated. So those are the things that we don't want. Now, anyone can use this trajectory. Um, it's very great when you're trying to look at, at a goal because not only do you need to know what you want to get to the goal, you also wanna know what you don't want because when you put those two together, it just gives you a broader understanding of what moving towards reaching your goal looks like. So with that said, we are going to look at our integrated star. Babette, now, um, excuse me for one moment, Babette, I, I apologize. Um, I just want to interject something here. I, I should have said it before. The reason, you may be a little bit confused because we've talked about, we're gonna focus on the integrated star and we are, um, but a precursor to the integrated star is you know, you use the star to address a challenge. And so first, what is the challenge? And with that, normally the challenges arise around the vision. And so that's why we've begun with the trajectory. And I also want to tell you that as Donna spoke to a few moments ago, that in your handouts, you will, you do have a trajectory there, a blank trajectory, one that is a fillable form. And we, we're hoping that you will take it and you will use it and, um, and then move from there. So with that, I'll I'll move to the next slide, Babette. Is that what you'd like? Yes, please. Okay. So to see what we want for this Christmas, we're gonna go back and look at Christmas pasts. Um, Melanie loves Christmas. We have a Christmas tree up in her room all the time. She listens to Christmas carols almost year round. You like Christmas carols? And yes. So, um, well, yes. we have some pictures up here. We're gonna talk about what Christmas pasts have looked like. Um, we are a family that celebrates Christmas. So this time of year is usually full of fun family activities that lead up to a Christmas Eve lasagna feast at my mother's house. So in the first picture, you can see that is um, our family packed into my mother's tiny little living room on Christmas Eve. Um, and Mel can tell you a little bit about that. So who all did we have here last year? Susie, Susie which is one of our family friends. Um, who else is in the picture? 
Briar, yes. Briar is her nephew who's wearing the hat. Yeah, that's what so who else is in there? No, no, but then. Nope, we'll show them that in just a minute. TV off. Mm -hmm. the, the TV was off there because we were all having fun together. So that is the biggest event of our holiday season. Um, we do have some other activities that we do. The second picture is Mel at our uh, Santa gift exchange party where we all bring a present, put it in a pile. Everyone has, is, draws a number. And as you draw a number, you get to pick a gift and someone may decide they want that gift and take it from you. You may end up getting to keep it till the end. Um, yes. But Melanie, mm -hmm. what did you get that day? Good gut. A blanket. Mm -hmm. And you really liked the present that you got, didn't you? Yeah. Yes, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, the picture on the bottom right is Melanie. And uh, I'll let her tell you about that. What were you doing in this picture? Um, we're showing Melanie pictures because her vision is low and she can't really see it on the screen. You were going out to eat. Who were you with? Who was with you? Daddy. That's right. This was on a road trip. Melanie loves to go on what she calls road trips, especially around the holiday season to go places to shop. And she likes to shop and go out to eat. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the picture on the top right, you Marvel. will see um, Marvel. Melanie was absolutely exhausted <laughs> after our um, holiday festivities that evening. Um, we did have a, a um, ugly Christmas sweater. Sleep. Yes, you were asleep. An ugly Christmas sweater mm -hmm. contest that year, and I won. I do think it was the hat that, that put me over the top for winning. <laughs> So um, you, you can see that we just really enjoy Christmas. So next slide, please, Marianne. These are also some, some pictures of Christmas past. We have uh, Melanie with her sisters on a shopping day. She has two sisters and they really like to spend time together. Um, so they were, this was a shopping day. And then the last one was where we took a train ride to um, see the lights. So um, another thing we've done in Christmas past is we've went to local dance studio productions of the Nutcracker. We try to find a local small troupe who might be presenting that because Melanie really likes the ballet. Um, and we always try to hit the Christmas sales afterwards. So that's where we get most of everything that we're sharing with you today. So those are some ideas of what Christmas past looked like. Um, some of those traditions we can't really carry on right now because of not being able to get with our extended family and not, you know, not wanting to risk our health by, by going shopping or taking train rides or anything. So we had to look this year as to how are we going to have a happy, healthy holiday despite the changes. So next slide, please, Marianne. So we have used the pat the star in the past. Um, personally for other other things we have to think about like we've used it in Melanie's person-centered sure. plan we've used it to build a resume uh, and this year we thought well let's let's look at the star and look at the five points to talk about how we can have a happy healthy holiday so the first point of the star we always look at are our relationships so excuse me strengths and assets <laughs> Sorry, no problem. My, no problem. <laughs> my, my mind was looking at the, the, the relationships point. Strengths and assets. We always want to look at that first because we're going to build it around what's what are your strengths and assets? Let's look at what is all about you. So Melanie is very personable. She likes to help people. She likes to, to do activities. She has good cooking skills. She loves music. She's very musically inclined. Um, and she's very fun loving. As you can see, you know, we're enjoying our, uh, yeah. our adorable sweaters here. Yes. So Mel has lots of strengths and assets. So now let's look at relationships. So, um, Mel is surrounded by family and friends who, who love her and are certainly yes. um, trying to do their best to help her get a happy, healthy holiday. It includes myself, her dad, she has two sisters, a nephew whom she truly loves. Yeah, you can show us that in a minute. 
um, and she is really missing spending time with him right now. Her mammy or her mimi, as she calls her, and Pat M, who is the famous lasagna maker. Uh, her friend Suzanne, who is um, pretty much become part of our family and attends most of our family events. Pappy and, and Mamma, her uncles, aunts, cousins, uh, Nellie, who's her DSP, whom she has a great relationship with, and she has other friends too. So that, that's the main bulk of her relationships. So next, let's look at technology. What are some things that can help her that we, you, know, you might not really think at, about? So first off, we looked at internet access because having that, it opens up a world virtually where she can uh, FaceTime her family and friends. We can do Zoom meetings. We can use her iPhone to call family members. We can do a Facebook event to, to invite people to our virtual Zoom meetings, which is a, something we're thinking about doing this year. So certainly technology is going to pay a big part of her happy, healthy holiday this year. So next we want to look at what resources are available. Yes. And we didn't want to just look in our community because right now we need all of the resources available. So we really looked into uh, resources available on the internet. We looked at social media, such as Facebook, where we can you know, do a Facebook invite for a Zoom meeting. Um, we looked at YouTube a lot because YouTube can give us ideas on how to do a Zoom meeting. Um, so for our family members who are not really familiar with using technology, such as Facebook or um, a Zoom meeting or FaceTime, we can always refer them to YouTube to look up instructions on how to do that. Um, we have found Pinterest has been very valuable. Pinterest has given us ideas on activities that we can do, on craft activities. Um, this year, Melanie and her nephew will each be getting stockings that they can decorate. He'll be at his house, she'll be at our house, but we can do Zoom and they can each do their stocking and then share them with each other when they're done. Um, we've looked at our parks. Some of our parks have light shows that you can drive through. So we've done a virtual or a, a drive by at a local zoo where they had light displays and we went at night and got to see some of the animals. Um, we're getting ready actually tonight. We are doing a light show with our daughter and my grandson, Melody's nephew, where we will be going to the same light show, but in different vehicles. So that's locally. And then back to some of the internet stuff, um, Mel's gonna have to use grocery pickup. We don't go into the grocery stores. We're doing online shopping. So we've really tried to look in a huge section of how we can use resources. Um, virtual tours uh, where you can look at museums. So we might be doing some of that. We are going to watch the Nutcracker virtually. So um, definitely, you, know, you can look at all the different resources. So, and then lastly, we're going to look at eligibility specific supports. And Melanie is supported by her DSP. She is in DDA's Community Pathways Waiver. She has a coordinator of community services, which is always uh, um, a good resource too. She lets us know if there are things in the area that we might be interested in. And Melanie also is eligible to have a nurse consult. Yes. And so we do discuss with her some of our ideas to make sure that she feels that they are safe. So how can we look at these different points and, and build our happy, healthy holiday? So let's look at the relationships. We talked a little bit about some of these, but we're going to schedule outdoor activities. We're going to have snowball fights. Um, one of our big memories is there are times when I have woke the girls up in the middle of the night on a bright, clear night where the stars are out and said, um, get dressed, we're going for a snowball fight. Most often those did not involve her father. So it was a mother-daughter day <laughs> or night. So um, we're going to go sled riding. We do live where there's usually a, enough snow to sled ride. We are going to bake. Now you can show them what you're gonna bake. Cookies. Cookies, <laughs> that's right. And <laughs> We're going to decorate them. Uh, Mel's quite fond of sprinkles, so I'm sure. Yes, welcome. I'm sure people are going to um, appreciate all of the cookies with sprinkles. We plan to deliver them to our families. Yes, you like to make cookies, don't you? Lots of cookies. Lots of cookies. She's going to make. 
um, we're going to look at the light shows together. Um, there are several of them around the area. A lot of them are free where you just pull in. We'll have our uh, other daughter and Mel's nephew and brother-in-law can pull in beside us. We can have our phones on and we can look at the light show. We'll just be separated by our vehicles. So that's something we're really looking into. Um, we're going to watch the same movie while we're on Zoom. Uh, we did that the other night. We were at our house watching Annabelle's Wish and our daughter and son-in-law and grandson, Mel's nephew, were watching it at their house. So it, it's a way to stay connected even when you're not physically together. So that's how we're going to use some of the relations, you know, relationships and what we can build to, to work towards our happy, healthy holiday. So next, let's look at technology. Well, we're going to do some of these things via FaceTime. Um, one of our traditions is that whenever I am doing anything holiday, I always wear my reindeer ears. And um, this is something I've done since my adult daughters were very young. What are these? Hat. My hat. That's right. And so um, on our Zoom calls with my grandson, we are wearing our reindeer ears. So he might talk to me once where I have a reindeer ear on. He might talk to me again where I have my hat on. But I'm trying to build with him a tradition that I started when our children were very young, that they never knew when mom was going to be wearing her reindeer ears or, or a crazy hat or a crazy sweater, just because it, it, it just was fun for them. It's a, a memory that didn't cost anything. And they can always say, oh, mom is always wearing those reindeer ears. Yeah, but it's a happy time, isn't it? Yeah, happy time. Um, so we're also planning maybe to use Zoom. We know we can't physically get together. We may be doing our lasagna feast um, on, on the computer on Zoom. So um, let's look at how we're going to use these community resources. So we're finding fun activities and recipes by using Pinterest, learning how to do certain um, things by looking on YouTube. We're doing grocery pickup, ordering our groceries online for the cookies that Mel's going to make. Um, she'll get to look at the ingredients. We'll have to see what we need, match it up to our online shopping, and we'll go and pick that up um, where they do curbside delivery. We'll be doing online shopping for any craft activities that we might do. So. Those are some of the ways we're going to use our resources. So how about eligibility specific supports? Well, her direct support professional can research the recipes and activities, assist in planning and implementing the activities, and of course, we'll consult the nurse about any concerns we might have. So, so let's look at our next slide, please, Mary Ann, and we'll talk about what is Christmas present going to look like this year. Now, we did mention some of these activities. Um, we are going to try to get together for outdoor activities. We feel that we might, you know, we're going to be safe if we see my daughter and son-in-law and grandson. And certainly Melanie is really missing the time with her, her nephew. She, um, she really enjoys doing activities with him. And usually when we're going to do something, she wants to know if he gets to come along. But we feel that maybe we can find a place to go sleigh riding. We can have snowball fights, build snowmen. Um, we've not went caroling in a lot of years, but I really think that that's something we might do this year. I think we can brighten some people who have been inside their house, maybe without the extra family and, and resources that other people have. And that might really brighten up their night. So we're planning on that. Of course, Melanie will be baking and delivering lots of cookies. Lots of cookies? Yes. I thought so. <laughs> um, we're going to decorate our masks. If we have to be somewhere where we have a mask, you might see one of our masks with a Rudolph nose on it um, or a Santa beard. Uh, we're, we're going to try to, to take ordinary times and make them extraordinary so that we do have some good memories. Um, we're going to look at the light shows together. We're going to participate in the same activities while our own homes, like I said, where we watched um, Annabelle's Wish together. Now, Christmas Day, we're not real sure what it's going to look like. Most of our activities happened on Christmas Eve, at our big holiday gathering where we had um, probably 15 or 20 people. We have a small family, 
but we still really packed my mom's living room full on those lasagna feast nights. It looks like this year that that might not be safe. Um, so we may have to do some some games that are um, available for us to do on Zoom that night. We sometimes we usually do a gift exchange, um, but our holidays are more about the presence of family and not the presence under the tree. So this year, since we really can't safely get together, um, we've opted to do Christmas for another family. Um, we, we know of a family who has truly helped us in the past, um, done some extraordinary things for our family, and right now they're really struggling. So as a family, we decided that um, we would give Christmas to them. And, uh, you know, we know that if we were down and out, they would be there to help us as they were in the past. Yes, you're gonna make cookies. So um, we're really excited about that. We're all going to work together to try to um, pull our resources and just try to make a, uh, a difference in their life as they've made a difference in ours in the past. So we, um, we're, you know, we're, we're still not sure. We're still working on it. Every day we, we think of something new to do and we um, find a new activity. Mel bakes more cookies. <laughs> there, yes, Mel. Babette, Babette, you you bring up a, 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 a such a an important point. But before I get to that, I'd like to thank you and and Mel for sharing your um, your vision and um, and your story and and walking us through how you have thought about what you can do to create a, a, a wonderful holiday season given COVID. And, um, but the point I'd like to make is this, that your, your comment about not, still not sure about Christmas day. And this is, this is important and this happens for all of us. And, but it's a point I wanna make about the integrated star. The integrated star really is a dynamic tool. It's a dynamic conversation. And um, I don't want people to walk away, um, particularly when, let's just consider for a moment person-centered planning that we you gather and, and you have these wonderful conversations and you, you know, there's the vision, there are the challenges that are associated with that. And then you, you're going to apply the star to those challenges that, and when you do that, it, it's not one and done. It, it really is ongoing. And, and sometimes that can feel a bit overwhelming, but I encourage you not to be overwhelmed and you can always break it down. Um, but it's a giving, given, things change um, as you're still undecided about what's going to happen for you on, on Christmas Day. Um, at this point, I'd like, what I'd like to do is also just talk about the fact that um, Babette, you, you've got a wonderful family and, and you really have, you've identified several, a variety of different resources. What we know is that not everyone has those resources and, and we recognize that. But to the extent, and again, this is what I love about the Integrated Star, that you're able to sit down and, and with at least another person and, and begin to think and, and really comb through it and, and brainstorm and, um, and all again with the intent of finding, beginning to find solution and, and hope and encourage that you, encourage you to do so. Um, what I'd like to do is um, take, move on, um, actually talk of speaking about resources for a moment. We've just listed a couple of things that perhaps you've already thought of, but if you haven't, um, there are some resources or ideas around technology that you might want to, to consider. Another thing to think about is not, it isn't the case that um, people with disabilities are necessarily living home with their families. In our case, our daughter does not reside within our home, and some of our challenges around COVID are, are a bit different than, than those that Babette has or that maybe you have. And, and to that point, what are those challenges and how might technology assist you in, in the connecting with your family member? Um, other I, I list, um, resources we've listed here are the community-based resources. One of the things that um, I think we're going to do on Christmas Eve, I, um, there's a dear priest friend of ours who signs 
um, the mass and he is going to be offering mass on Christmas Eve. So we practice, we, we celebrate Christmas as well. And we're looking to hook our daughter up with her iPad because the, the, the mass is going to be virtual and she'll be able to see him sign, right? So it's gonna be more meaningful for, for her. And then we'll be doing that at home. And, and so again, connecting in that way. Um, Parks and Rec, the, the light, light exhibits that exist. You know, what are those things that you can do that um, in a safe way that make the, that will make this holiday time a, a bit more special. And then of course there are, we've list some eligibility specific resources pertaining to DDA. So all of those are there for you um, and charting the life course tools and the website is there for you as well. If you're interested in looking at some more of the planning tools, it's the link is there available to you. Okay, so with that, I'd like to take, we'd like to take questions if you have any or, oh, also that reminds me, I've mentioned to you your handouts. What we would love, if you are at all inclined, we'd love for you to share your, your integrated star with us so that we can share it on Facebook. Um, we really need to, we are a community, right? And we do support one another. We inspire one another. And sometimes we can bring people down. We want to inspire. And if you're, again, if you're at all inclined, if you are willing to share your, your integrated star with us, we'd love to post it on Facebook for other people to see, to, to encourage them as well to, to think, to think more broadly, to think more widely about what might be available to them to support them during this time. Okay, so with that, we'd love to take some questions. If you have a question or a comment, please, um, you, you can just um, insert it through um, your, the chat or question box. Um, and again, we, we really are welcoming questions pertaining to the integrated star, or the trajectory, or the holiday. If it's if your question relates to services and supports, please contact your DDA local regional office or your coordinator of community services. If it's Appendix K related, please submit it to the email there. Um, with that, Erin, do we have any questions or comments or thoughts, please? Hi everyone. Um, sorry, of course now is when the dog starts barking. He's excited too. Um, so we don't have any questions yet. Um, Mel and Babette, I, I just love seeing your star. I think when a couple of things really just shown through to me. One was, you know, when you first look at it, right, it looks like it's a list of things, but when you talked about it, there was so much detail and thought that's shown through about each category and um, all of the names you listed and the idea of figuring out how to stay connected with loved ones at this point and finding joy really just shown through that. And so I just really appreciate you sharing that. And I'm wondering for folks who have never filled out a star before, right? It's on the one hand, it looks simple, right? It's, it's a star, it has colors, but it is that blank piece of paper in front of you. And so do you have any advice for people who maybe are downloading this from the handouts and it's their first time and they're getting started about how they might get started? I do. Um, first off, there's no wrong way to fill out the star. Um, you can use it in so many settings. Like I said, we've used it to build a resume for Mel. Um, when we started trying to think of what are we going to put in her resume when she was applying for a job, um, I went, oh, the star. Um, so we started using the star for that. So basically, you want to start in the middle and put what is your goal? Are you talking about just the person and you want to list what's available to the person? Then put the person's name in the middle of the star. If you're looking to get um, a job, put that in the middle of the star and just start building around. You always want to look at your strengths and assets first. And I apologize that I did not do that even though I have been trained and that's how I, I do use it. Um, always list your strengths and assets. We did a very short listing here because of the, the space of the star and for time reasons, but everyone has strengths and assets. And when you, you list them first, it really opens up just amazing aspects of the star. So um, look at your relationships next. You can look at extended relationships. This doesn't have to be family. This can be your neighbor next door. 
You can, it can be um, a coworker. So you can always list the relationships that are important to you. It doesn't have to just be family. Um, you wanna jump to technology. We use things such as uh, Melanie has an adapted mouse. So that's something that has helped her. That's not something I would have originally thought about until we started looking at technology. Um, you want to look at your community resources. What's already available that can help you? If you're trying to find a job, you want to look at resources such as resources for independence. You know, you, you just want to um, start small. And as you start filling in these spaces, it's like it just starts to flow. And you may go back to strengths and assets and add something after you've already filled out the star. You, you might think of a different type of technology you could add. So, so don't be afraid to use it. You can't do anything wrong with it. It's for your personal guidance. And um, I, I think once you start using it, you can see how it will apply to different situations and how it can be used in all aspects of working towards a good life. So I don't know, Marianne, do you have I um, completely agree with everything that you've said, Babette. I, I, again, I would reiterate that um, don't get too hung up on the categories. Don't get too hung up on your words. Just, just go with it. Go and, and as you, again, as you think and you're writing down and you're jotting down your thoughts, it, they will, more will come and, and it will gel. What I love about this integrated star is it reminds us constantly of, of who the person is, that this is not, this person who happens to have developmental disability isn't just a person with developmental disability and it should not just be concerned with eligibility specific supports. It reminds us that whomever he or she is, they have strengths and assets. And, and as a team, as we're working, particularly for, for teams comprised of of team members that may not be biologically linked or particularly linked to the person or connected to the person. Um, they may not have, that, that individual may not have someone who knows them well that's part of their team. So for me, this, this integrated star really forces those questions for, for um, the team member to think about, to think about the person's strengths and assets. And if you don't know them, how might you begin to discover them? Because when you do that, right, and then relationships and those that they do or don't have, or, or you are very intent in learning these things about the person, you discover the person and you discover what's important to them, how they want to spend their time, what makes them happy, and how we can serve them best. So, yeah, this, this star can lead you in all kinds of wonderful directions and really can assist you with whatever it is that you want to do. Yeah. Erin, have, have any other questions come in? You know, so what we have um, is some real appreciation has come in through the chat. But I do want to share that with, with the three of you. I also want to say, you know, if you were talking about the strengths and assets portion of the star, one thing that I just love about the tool is that it's right up front. It's right where your eyes naturally fall. And, you know, people's strengths and assets shine through when you use this. And it's one of the things I really appreciate about it. You get to just see so many positive things and learn about people and think about them that way. So um, I do want to share people have said things like, this was great. I love seeing the creativity and thought process that went into planning our new normal. Um, it's just sort of such a great visual um, about how to think about the star and how it can be used to help. Great, thank you. Well, we hope by following the recommended guidelines and social distancing and enjoying our new family activities that we all will have our safe, healthy, happy holiday. And we wish that for everyone else too. We absolutely do. But before um, we move on, I, I there there are just a few more things I'd like to just to say about the star and and how the star can help you to uncover and, and to discover who the person is or might be or want to be. And again, 
all of us as human beings, we make assumptions all of the time. And, um, and sometimes we need to turn those assumptions upside down. And I'm just gonna share a story, a personal story with you to, to illustrate this. Um, my daughter, um, my, my daughter has um, significant disability, cerebral palsy. She really requires support in everything that she does. She's not ambulatory and is nonverbal and what have you, but it's a beautiful young woman who really cares very deeply about her life. She's nonverbal, um, so forth and so on. And a couple of years ago, um, one of, so I, I, I have many stars for Maggie, um, but I don't have them here today, but just about discovery and how important discovery is and how important conversation is um, and opportunity to try new things and with that, what you discover. So years and uh, five, six years ago, we became, we had the opportunity to participate, become involved in a group called Athletes Serving Athletes. And um, Maggie participated in her first triathlon, right? And on this day, this October 1st day, five years ago or so, it was rainy, it was cold. There were white caps in, um, the, the, the bay that which we were participating in and I'm thinking oh my goodness what are we doing right and but nonetheless Meg's going out with the group and they went out the the, the the swim is the first leg of the 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 race right and Maggie is supported in a um, a raft imagine a military blown up raft right completely supported and 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 the um wingmen, they call them, surround her in the water. You know, somebody's pulling the boat and she's surrounded by others, always making sure she's fine. It took everyone quite a while to do this first leg and get in. And, um, but when they did, Mags with the cerebral palsy and because it was chilly and rainy and what have you, she was, she was shivering, right? And she looked terrible. And I looked at my husband and I thought, oh my gosh, what have we done to her? What are we doing to her? And with that, you know, we, I said to Maggie, you know, you don't have to go on. And, um, and she looked at me and the way in which we community, communicate, Maggie understands tr her receptive language is, is strong, um, but you have to ask her questions in such a way that she can say yes or no to. And, or vocalized to, and um, I said, so, you know, you don't have to go on. It's cold, you're wet. And she looked at us and I said, do you want to go on? And she went, ah, uh, her vocalizations, ah. And I thought, oh my gosh, she's a competitor. She is a competitor. She wanted to finish this race. Who knew? You know, to look at Mag's um, you'd never know that. She doesn't have the ability to spontaneously tell you that. But through this opportunity, um, we learned something about her, something that was very important to her and something that she wants to do and, um, and does continue to do right now. Of course, it's not happening. So discovery is such a huge part of, of the planning. Now, I'm, I'm even for Christmas, Christmas during COVID, right? COVID, yeah, COVID Christmas. Planning is necessary. When, when you're working with folks in developing person-centered plans, discovery is so important. Opportunity is so important. And I think what I love about this integrated star, again, it reminds us, you know, a person has relationship, a person has strengths and assets. You know, there are things they want, things they don't want. Um, and it just really facilitates that conversation. And if you use it, if you spend time with it, it becomes intuitive and it's, it's quite easy to do. It just helps to remind you. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll stop. Um, I don't know if any other question or comment has come in, Aaron. And if not, then... There is a comment now for you that says, I love making cookies too. And thank you for sharing such great ideas. Okay. All righty. Well, if there are no other comments or questions, I think we can conclude the webinar. Again, Babette, I just want, and Mel, want to thank you, Mel and Babette, for being here today, sharing your story, sharing your planning process with us. And of course, I want to thank Deputy Secretary Bernie Simons, um, Patricia Sestoki, and Aaron. Um, for making all of this possible. And we just wish all of you a happy, healthy, 
um, holiday season and um, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Oh, it's great. Bye -bye.